And today what I want to show you is our Live Create feature. Um, basically, uh, what this allows you to do is create content across the PS3, Xbox 360, as well as PC simultaneously. So, the first thing I'm going to do is start up my Xbox and the PS3. And as you see, we'll load into the same level as the editor is sitting in right now. So, one of the newest features with the Sandbox is our now console options. Basically, all you have to do is click a checkbox to whether you're working, for the, uh, working onto the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3, and it's simply just an enabled checkbox. Once I've checked these off, you can see that I can actually synchronize the camera across the Xbox as well as the PlayStation 3. So everything I'm doing in the editor here is going all the way across to both the consoles. So we haven't just made improvements to the Sandbox interface, we've also made major improvements on the rendering engine. What I want to show you real quick is our deferred lighting system. So obviously lights are the keys to making things look nice. Um, as we create more lights in a scene, uh, more lights are interacting with the objects in the scene, and obviously the textures are going to pop a lot more normal maps, specular maps, anything like this. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just grabbing a light, and I'm going to move it around in the hallway, and as you can see, that's updating on the PS3 as well as the Xbox. So we'll make some more major modifications to this deferred light here. So I'm upping the radius to 5, change the diffuse multiplier, and bring up the specular. Now it's a little blue and washed out, I'm just going to change it to maybe a green color, something like this, and you see how easy it is to actually manipulate this and change everything that you want directly on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. So if you're a developer making a multi-platform game, this is an essential tool to be able to compare what your game is looking like on consoles. There's a couple more nice features with the deferred lighting. Uh, we can do a lot of different lighting types. So this one, for example, is going to be a projection type light. So as you can see, I'm projecting a, a texture uh, across, um, but it's simulated like lights. So and again, updating on the PS3 and Xbox 360. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this light, and I'll move us outdoors. So as I come outside, you can see this is very much uh, a, a crisis type scene that we had done. Now, the difference here is that you're going to see it on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Now, there are some really uh, nice tools that we're taking over from Sandbox to be able to develop onto the consoles. And one of the biggest tools was the time of day tool. Our, our designers don't want to be bothered with a, a lot of graphs, a, a lot of problems, so uh, we just gave them a simple slider. So as you can see, as I change the time of day, that's updating on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 and the PC all at the same time. So I'm just going to change it to more of a night scene, and you can see, again, comparing this makes it very nice. So I'll bring back the time here, and I'll show you how we do our terrain modification and a bit of terrain painting in the sandbox. So I'm just moving my camera into position here, and I'm going to go ahead and grab our modify brush. And what this allows us to do is just do simple height map painting. So I'll change my sliders here. Smooth it down a little bit. We'll do something real fast, just maybe a little island or something coming out here. Smooth this right down. So now as you can see, that's updating on the consoles as well while I'm painting on the PC. Sample a bit of a lower height. Maybe give some, some shape to this. All right, great, I'm pretty happy with that. So what we're gonna go ahead now and do is do a bit of layer painting, because obviously that doesn't look very realistic yet. We're gonna throw some textures on it. So the first thing I'm gonna grab is actually our Terrain Texture Layer Browser. This is a new feature um, that wasn't existing in uh, CryEngine 2. And this is a nice way to interface with all our textures. So these are all the textures that are going to go onto the terrain, and you can actually see all the restrictions that we place on them. For example, they might have a minimum height, a maximum height, a maximum angle, minimum angle, anything to that effect. So I'll go ahead and close that. Open up database view. So I just jump into the layer. Now the nice thing is, is that we can very quickly prototype any sort of vegetation placement that we want by just simply selecting a few layers. I'm just gonna change the density here a little bit to about 15. And you just basically 
click a couple times, and you get an instant forest. And as you can see, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. Now one of the things that sets Sandbox apart from all of the other editors and interfaces out there is what you see is what you play. We brought this now to consoles as well. So as soon as I desync the camera, you'll see that both the players on, on both consoles are actually dropped into the game. So I had just painted some terrain out, put some trees down. Uh, maybe I'll look up on the PlayStation here. Can't really see too much. So as you can see, I'm instantly playing in here. And I've just created this. So if I was a better shot, I could probably take down that tree. <laughs> And if you screw up, you can always just sync the camera back up and drop it back down. This what you see function, uh, what you see is what you play functionality is essential for our designers, obviously, because if uh, it's very difficult to move one object, uh, they're only going to move it once. But if you're able to move the object and iterate the gameplay, you're able to really, really polish out the placement of objects, textures, vegetation, anything like this. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do a little bit of gameplay modification, like I was talking about. So as you can see, we have the pier here, and I have just a very simple example. So I'm going to grab a couple pier pieces. Maybe we'll grab this one here. Uh, we'll probably grab this one here. And I'm just going to copy this out. There we go. So as you can see, updating directly onto the PS3 and Xbox. And I'll copy another one, and maybe a third. So again, what you see is what you play functionality. I'm just going to jump in, and I'm going to test this little platformer that I, uh, a mini platformer that I've created here. So first jump, probably not so good. Maybe I'll go back, try this again. Oh. So there we go. First jump's no problem. Second jump, I'm not very good at. Go ahead and move this a little bit more. And again, this is all iterating gameplay. This is the stuff that designers have to do day in and day out. And having the speed to do this, it's, it's godsend. So, like you can see there, it's moved too far. So, simply to move something like this back, all right. So, the final step to the uh, live create features is actually being able to change the actual assets that you have on the ground. So, the first thing I'm going to select again is this pier. And I've already got the pure texture open here in Photoshop, if you can see on the top, le top right screen. And I'm not much of an artist, so I'm just going to do a couple scribbles here. Uh, yes, please. So I do a couple scribbles there. Control S. Pop somebody open. There we go. And as you can see, that updates directly onto the PC. Takes a second, and then PlayStation 3 instantly. So having this level of interaction with your objects is essential. So we'll go ahead and save it back. And as you can see, that updates right away. So as the Xbox is still loading up here, uh, I'll show you some of our character creation type. So as we place down AI entities, they're going to synchronize as well over to the console. So this makes gameplay very easy to create. So I'm going to go ahead and open one of our libraries. And as the Xbox is up here, I'm just going to hit start. And now I'm just going to enable the Xbox 360 in our console options that I showed earlier. Click OK. And it's just a matter of resyncing that camera back. Now, something you'll notice is that that pier looks very different, obviously, on the Xbox to PlayStation 3 to the PC. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sync all the changes that I've made directly to the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox.